Can someone explain binding vows? Yes, but I'll only do it on one condition if you hit that follow button. Deal? Boom. That right there could be a binding vow because all binding vows are, are agreements. They can be made with someone else or they can even be made with yourself. Now, the only difference between our world and the JJK world is binding vows are enforced with cursed energy. To start, let's take a look at a couple of personal binding vows and Natami is perfect for this because Natami is the one that introduces us to the concept of revealing one's hand. Now, what is that? That is the act of telling your opponent what your curse technique is and how it works. But why would someone do that? Because all you're doing is giving your enemy intel that's going to help them defeat you. Well, you do this because in response to that, you're putting yourself in a riskier position. And like I said, cursed energy stems from negative emotions. So by putting yourself in a riskier position, your cursed energy is going to swell, therefore making your curse technique stronger. So this is a personal binding vow. You take on a risk, revealing your technique, in order to gain strength. Your technique becomes stronger. Anatomy also showcases another personal binding vow called overtime. And for that vow, he limits himself to only 80% of his cursed energy during the day. But in return for that, he will have 120% of his cursed energy at night or during overtime. Also, a big factor in these personal binding vows is the idea of equivalent exchange. Your risk and reward must be roughly equal. For example, you can't say like, well, I'm not going to use any cursed energy on Monday, so on Tuesday, I'm going to be immortal. Like, that obviously wouldn't compute. Additionally, if you break a personal binding vow, for example, if Nanami were to use more than 80% of his cursed energy during the day, he just wouldn't be able to get that added bonus at night anymore. So there's no real consequence for breaking a personal binding vow. You only lose what you were going to gain from it. However, that is not the case for breaking a binding vow you make with someone else. We are told numerous times that the consequences of doing that are dire. We've never seen firsthand, either in the anime or the manga, of the consequences of doing this, but several characters have made stark warnings of this. And binding vows between two or more people don't give you the same, like, buffs that a binding vow with yourself does. They're more just about contracts, like making sure the promise that these people agree to is going to be held to. So binding vows have to be mutual for all parties or else they wouldn't agree to it. An example being like we saw in season two where Mahito made a binding vow with Mekamaru. Mekamaru would be their spy, their mole, and in return, Mahito would heal Mekamaru. Obviously, if there was no binding vow involved, Mekamaru would never agree to this because he wouldn't trust Mahito to actually heal him afterwards. And speaking on the consequences for breaking binding vows with two or more people, um, False Ghetto in this scene like warns Mahito a couple times being like, be sure you heal him before we fight him because you don't want to break your binding vow. Of course, there is also the binding vow between Sukuna and Yuji, where Yuji, in return for getting healed by Sukuna, agreed to give Sukuna access to his body for one minute so long as he didn't hurt anybody and that he forgot he made this vow. So yeah, binding vows are a cornerstone of Jujutsu society. You can find them all throughout the series. So I hope this helped clear them up.